Hello, my name is Carlos Oteiral and I am a PhD student at the University of Oxford. I'm going to present my poster, Can I Debate Quantum Computing Help a Study Protein Folding? This poster and the research that it's presenting is motivated by the advances in quantum computing over the past couple of years. Nowadays, you can access prototypes of quantum computers with tens of quantum bits just through the cloud using, for example, the IBM Quantum Experience. We also expect that prototypes with hundreds of qubits will be available in the next decade, enabling very interesting application. As a result of this advance, this enormous interest from numerous communities, in particular the biotechnological and pharmaceutical industries, to understand what these quantum computers can be used for that can help us solve the problems we're interested in. In this poster, I'm going to present an example of quantum computing in action from a simplified protein folding problem, the protein lattice model. The protein lattice model is just a simplification of protein structure, where we describe a chain of amino acids as a self-avoiding walk on a lattice. Self-avoiding walk is just a uh, walk on a lattice that tries to avoid itself. In the protein lattice model, interactions between different amino acids lead to energetic stabilization, and the problem consists of finding the self-avoiding walk on the lattice that minimizes this sum of energies. Lattice models are not just a mathematical idealization, but they have been used extensively to study protein folding arguments. One of the most uh, popular uh, uh, applications was a study of the funnel hypothesis in the early days of protein folding. But they have also been used as a proxy for conformational ex exploration. In practice, they take uh, a protein, they coarse grain it as a protein lattice model, try to solve the protein lattice model, and use this as a starting for more refined methods like uh, lattice free, sorry, off lattice coarse grain models or even molecular dynamic simulations. The method that we use to solve this problem with a quantum computer is an algorithm known as adiabatic quantum computing or sometimes quantum annealing. Adiabatic quantum computing describes the, energies, the, the energetics of the problem as a Hamiltonian function, as an operator in quantum mechanics, and uses the adiabatic theorem of quantum mechanics to prepare a quantum state that closely resembles its ground state. This figure that I show here is a very good uh, demonstration of how it works. At the beginning of the uh, computational problem, we prepare a quantum state that can provide any possible solution with the same probability. As we evolve the computer, we see a change in the probability. Note that the, intent, the color in every square represents the logarithm of the probability. Until when we reach the end, we have essentially 99% probability of measure one of these two states that are just the uh, computational representation of uh, folded proteins. There are multiple ways to encode a protein lattice problem in a quantum computer, and there are several papers discussing how to do this. There are also two experimental demonstrations where people have used actual quantum computers to solve this problem. But there is a problem. No one understands what is exactly the computational scaling of the algorithm. The objective of our work is to determine what is this scaling and if there is any advantage to use a quantum computer with respect to a classical computer. We tackled this using two types of numerical simulations. The first numerical simulation addressed the so-called spectral gap. There's a, a theorem, uh, well in fact several theorems with different conditions, that indicate that the scaling of this algorithm is related to a physical parameter. Physical parameter, the minimal spectral gap, is related to the minimum energy difference between the smallest eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian function that encodes the problem. The theorem says that the scaling is bounded by the inverse square of the scaling of the gap. Therefore, if, for example, the gap decreases linearly, we know that the scaling is going to be quadratic. We used a numerical linear algebra library to compute the spectral gaps for a number of different proteins and we represent the results in these two graphs. On the left, we show the distribution of gaps, which for a particular protein size, it's approximately a skewed Gaussian distribution, where the majority of the examples focus around the mean, but there are heavy tails of 5 to 10% of the data that extend several orders of magnitude. There's a stark difference between the average and the worst case. In the average case, the scaling is very mild and it barely changes, when the worst case, between 6 and 9 amino acids, we see a difference of 6 orders of magnitude. This augurs an exponential scaling that's especially bad. 
the worst case, since the worst case increases by five orders of magnitude, we expect that the exponential constant is going to be really large. We then considered a direct simulation of the problem. We used the Bruns cutter method to directly integrate Schrodinger equation and simulate the exact time that it would take to solve the problem with a quantum computer. Since this is very expensive, we could not consider as many examples as before, so we considered two different samples, one with the worst case gaps and one with 100 random examples per size and dimension. We observed that there is barely any difference between these two samples, and that in fact the results are a lot milder than was previously forecasted, with a scaling that involves one or two orders of magnitude at most between four and nine amino acids. More importantly, when compared with classical simulated annealing, we see an important advantage. The conclusions of this study are threefold. The first conclusion is that as increasingly large quantum computers are available, the field of quantum computational biology is starting to arise. The second is that one of the problems in computational biology that might be solved using quantum computers is that of protein folding. But the third and most important conclusion is that actually there is an advantage of using quantum computers. Now, if you're interested in the results of this study, we have recently released a preprint where you can see all the details of these calculations and all of the results and statistical analysis. And if you're interested in quantum computing in general, we have released an article that has recently been published in Wise Computational Molecular Science, where we describe everything that we expect quantum computing to do in the realm of computational biology over the next decades. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you are staying for the Q&A, I'll be very happy to discuss with you about the cluster.